Good afternoon. My name is the Reverend Stephen Ayers, and I am the Bridge Priest at Christ Church in Aspen. I'm coming to you today from my dining room in Aspen, Colorado, where our family is preparing to celebrate uh, an agape supper uh, as part of our Monday Thursday liturgical practices. This service is designed to be used as an extended grace during your household's dinner. While Jesus washed his disciples' feet and actually told Peter he did not need to wash his hands, in this environment we know it is important to wash our hands. So while your household is washing to get ready for dinner, you may wish to read the passage from the Gospel of John that's posted on the Christchurch website, or you can just listen as I read it to you. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, he got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered him, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Jesus said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, and you, ha you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. Now that we have washed our hands, let us uh, gather around our own dinner tables. Uh, if you're curious, our uh, dinner meal for tonight in keeping with an agape supper is simple. We're having a vegetable beef soup, which we've made here, uh, bread, a little wine, uh, some cheese, olives, um, just a simple meal. Let us pray. This is the night that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the night that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the night that Christ took a towel and washed his disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. This is the night that Christ, our God, gave us this holy feast, that we who eat share this meal may here proclaim his sacrifice to be and be partakers of his resurrection, and at the last might reign with him in heaven. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp to put it under a bucket, but on a lampstand where it gives light for everyone in the house. And you, like the lamp, must shed light among your fellow men so that they may see the deed you do and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, held, on, held a last supper with his disciples, mercifully grant that as we may share a meal in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, we may remember his sacrifice and his rising in glory, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, I can remember sitting in a Roman Catholic church about 30 years ago during an interfaith Thanksgiving service, looking up at a classic crucifix with an extremely gaunt Jesus hanging on the cross. I was struck then by how out of sync that depiction of Jesus was with the way Jesus is portrayed in the Gospels. Jesus is constantly depicted as eating and drinking with his disciples, with Pharisees, with tax collectors, sinners, and others. He was accused in both Matthew and Luke of being a glutton and a drunkard. So a more biblically accurate crucifix might depict Jesus akin to, say, a laughing Buddha with a big pot belly. Jesus loved to eat with friends and foes alike. Including a religious element in communal meals was common in the Mediterranean world, not just among Jews, but among Greeks and Romans as well. In 1 Corinthians, Paul chastises members of the congregation who ate food offered to Greek gods at meals that were sponsored by the ancient Corinthian equivalent of a chamber of commerce lunch. Many of the meals Jesus ate were known as agape, which is Greek for fellowship love meals. They were based on Jewish table customs. Early Christians continued to celebrate these agape meals, often with the Eucharist. But within a century, the Eucharist became a more formal liturgy, but the fellowship meals continued separately. You may consider a church potluck to be a continuation of these early fellowship meals. Due to the pandemic, we cannot celebrate a fellowship meal together, nor can we celebrate the Eucharist. Now, I might note that there is a lively debate within church circles whether the Eucharist can be celebrated and blessed over the Internet. And a comparable debate has been held within Jewish circles about whether a Passover Seder can be celebrated over the internet, whether grandparents can zoom in or not. The current consensus among more conservative of uh, both uh, Jews and Christians to this question is no. The service we are celebrating tonight takes the general form of an agape meal and is intended to precede your own household meal. The liturgy is posted on ChristChurchAspen.org. We began with reading John's Gospel about foot washing with the suggestion given that, uh, that given the pandemic, we wash our hands instead of our feet. We then lit a candle symbolizing the light of Christ. Two descriptions of the Last Supper from St. Paul and St. Luke followed. At the conclusion of this homily, we will say the Lord's Prayer and then say graces over our respective meals. The graces are drawn from two early liturgies that describe Eucharistic and agape meal blessings. We are using the non-Eucharistic blessings from these prayers to avoid any implication 
that we can celebrate the Eucharist over the internet. Over the internet. That said, feel free to enjoy a glass of wine and some bread with your meal. At the end of the meal, please give thanks to God for the blessings you have received. Now, let us pray in the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our first grace comes from a work called the Didache, uh, which was written uh, somewhere between 96 and 125 AD. And the prayer goes like this. Almighty ruler, you created all things for the sake of your name. You gave men food and drink to enjoy so that they might give you thanks. Now you have favored us through Jesus, your servant, with spiritual food and drink, as well as with eternal life. Above all, we thank you because you are mighty. To you be glory forever and ever. Our next set of blessings are drawn from a work called the Apostolic Traditions of Hippolytus, which was written sometime around 200 AD. This includes specific blessings for specific foods. The first is for olive oil, and so I have some olive oil here to bless. If someone makes an offering of oil, give thanks in the same manner as for the oblation of the bread and wine. He does not give thanks with the same words, but quite similar, saying, Sanctify this oil, God, as you give holiness to all who are anointed and receive it, as you anointed kings, priests, and prophets, so that it may give strength to all who taste it and health to all who use it. Likewise, if someone makes an offering of cheese and olives, say, sanctify this brought together milk, just as you bring us together in your love. Let this fruit not leave your sweetness, this olive, which is a symbol of your abundance, which you made to flow from the tree for life to those who hope in you. In every blessing should be said, To you be glory, Father, Son, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever, throughout all ages. Amen. And now please enjoy your meal. Feel free to add blessings patterned after these ancient blessings above for other elements of your meal. And at the end of the meal, please say the following thanksgiving, which also comes from the Didache. We thank you, Holy Father, for your name which you enshrined in our hearts. We thank you for the knowledge and faith and immortality which you reveal to us through your servant Jesus. To you be glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, please do enjoy your meal with the small gatherings you have in your households. Feel free to Zoom in others uh, if that uh, is what you would like to do to gather with broader family. Tomorrow, our Good Friday service will be posted uh, uh, on the Christ Church website at noon as well as uh, live uh, put on Facebook Live at noon. And then on Sunday, our Easter services will be at 8 and 10. 8 is Facebook Live, and by 10, that will be posted on the Christ Church website on our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us for this uh, brief Monday Thursday service. Uh, enjoy a great end of Holy Week, and let us look forward with hope to Easter and to uh, the end of the pandemic, which has put us all in our homes and away from each other. Thank you.